what, what kind of coffee is that? It's a black coffee. Did you have sugar in it? No sugar. That's good. Yeah. yeah. <sighs> and while he's talking to me, I notice Kai continually touches his balls or his penis. I don't know. I haven't yet figured out what it is. Ew! I love the sign. But how do you spell beauty? B A R U T E. When you went off and you found somebody else that was into it, and then you text me the next day and was like, oh, uh, let's just be friends. It like, wasn't like that. I told but, you already. But still, you did it. You. <laughs> Oh, hi, how are you doing? Welcome back to 90 Day Fiance, um, Love in Paradise. So we're gonna be talking about Annie and Kyle. Oh, damn. Look at Madeline. Oh, it's like I'm being put on the spot here. Um, who else? Sean and Alea and Alex and Adriano, okay. Yeah! Oh, brother, this guy stinks! It's a very interesting episode. Okay, so we're gonna start off with you guys' favorite person. I know you love him as much as I do, Kyle. <laughs> Obviously, I'm just kidding. Anybody like that? Okay, so they made it at a coffee shop, and I've noticed that Kyle always wears a shirt that's just way too small for him. All that money going to plane tickets and traveling for sex, and nothing for an update on his clothing. Not even weird, like I usually say, but just sad. So then they sit down, and they start talking, and he asks her if she had any sugar in her coffee. Yes, he acts that, with his gut sticking out like that. I can tend to get bored easily by normal guys because every day is so predictable, while with a person like Kyle, it's more interesting because you never know what's going to happen the next day. Oh, girl. Like, I get it, but there's, like, so many weird guys in the world. And you pick the perverted guy? Not even a guy that likes anime. I love anime. But not even a guy that likes anime, but a guy that likes to just get girls pregnant. Him? Really? Anyways, now they're going sightseeing, and she noticed that he keeps touching his balls. But, like, why are you wiping it off on her like that? So she calls him out, and he says, it's because sitting down too much kills your sperm, and he doesn't even wear underwear either. And then he says, it's perfect. Professional. This guy is just, oh my goodness. I have to like readjust no, so it doesn't really. kill the balls. But don't touch it. But they're too big. So now they get to the beach and she wants to brush her hair because of the wind and he offers to do it and it goes from like something innocent to them making it like dirty and they're now like dirty talking. Right, is that right? Yeah, that's it's nice and slow. How are you doing? Like you can do it a little bit more maybe. More harder? Harder? Yeah, I want it harder. You like it hard? Definitely, like that, that, this is too soft for me. Okay, okay, okay. So after that, she starts asking him if he had intercourse with another girl in Australia. And he says he doesn't remember. Kyle! Oh, hell no. Not only did he remember, but he probably wrote it down in his diary too. Okay, like, don't fucking lie. Don't fucking lie. Did you have sex with I another woman? I don't know what I remember. If no. you don't remember, that means yes. Yes or no, it's not that difficult. So, she's now upset because he's ignoring her question and making her guess, especially because the answer is yes. So, he finally admits to it, but says that it was the woman's fault because she was desperate and wanted to do it naturally since she was older. And then he tries to play it off, saying that it was like a procedure, and she says, no, it's not. It's like having sex with someone else. My heart is racing right now because I don't know how to react. I think I have a much different relationship to sex. When I have sex with someone, usually he has to get pregnant, and it's more professional, it's boring. I don't view it as cheating at all. And so she tells him that if he wants this relationship to work out, that he needs to stop it altogether. And I'm actually very glad that she's sticking up for herself, because I just feel like she's letting him get away with, like, a lot of stuff. Like, a lot of stuff, like, normal woman... I don't think she's normal. But like, not let slide, you know what I mean? So then after that, she tells him that she'll think about it tonight and then let him know her decision. I want to try everything I can to make her happy. But donating sperm is the most important thing in my life. And it's just difficult that she can't accept a core part of who I am. Of course it's a core part of your life. You're weird, you're gross, you're perverted. And you take advantage of women when they're at the lowest, so... Yeah, duh. Okay, now let's move on to Luke and Madeline. So we find out that she has a beauty salon that Luke spent $10,000 in, but she lets us know that she's the one that actually did all the work. Hola, bienvenido a My Beauty. ¿En qué le podemos colaborar? Three months ago, I opened My Beauty. 
is a beauty salon when you can get your nails done, your lashes done, your makeup done. Muy bien. So then they get out and she shows him the sign and he notices that she spelled it wrong and she's like, no, don't say that. Like, what do you mean don't say that? You want him to congratulate you on spelling the word wrong? You think I am stupid? I know exactly how I spell it. B-E-A-U-T-E. Why? So we see inside and it looks legit and very good. So then they go over the numbers and to keep the business running, they have to pay like about $700. So then we find out that they need at least two or three clients a day, which is about 60 to 90 clients to break even. And then we find out that she only made 20 clients in the first month. Luke is upset, but I actually think that's pretty good for her, like her first month. Like obviously nobody's going to be like doing like amazing, like the first day that they open. So yeah. You go, girl. But with the numbers being that low to him, Luke gets worried and then finally tells her that he doesn't have a job anymore. The reason I'm asking all of these questions right now is because I don't have a job anymore, baby. How long ago this happened? Last month. So you lied to me for one month. See you, month. And then after that, he tells her that he can only afford to pay rent, bills, and taxes for two to three more months before he is broke broke. He then says that if they aren't turning a profit, then how are they going to continue paying the bills? So now she's mad, especially because he didn't tell her this earlier, but instead waited a whole month before he told her. But then she's like, he probably didn't tell her because he was probably embarrassed about it. So then they hug and kiss, and she says that they are a team and will work hard past this. And I am honestly like, very shocked with how positive she is because I honestly I genuinely thought she would tell him like get the fuck out of here and only come back when you don't pay my bills but no she's like being supportive and shit like okay okay maybe she'll like one off later but for now okay so then they get home and she has a surprise for him and she comes back wearing lingerie and then she tells us how great in bed he is and that he's her first blank they blank it out but hearing the s and like kind of reading her lips you can definitely tell that she said like squirter he needs my first is did you just say the first <laughs> Okay, now for Alex and Adriano. So they finally meet. Each person is thinking something different. Alex is wanting the relationship to progress and no more talk of a threesome, while Adriano wants to convince her of having threesomes in the relationship. So they're out walking and we find out that Adriano wants to live in Australia because there's better opportunity there for him with work and people being more open-minded, while Alex would prefer for them to stay in Italy if she's gonna have to move somewhere. So then they get to their dinner date and the conversation continues and she says that Australia isn't a place where she can get back home easily and she also needs to feel like she's in good good hands and then the threesome thing gets brought into it and so she talks about how they broke up the first time adriano and i are broken up twice over his desires of threesomes so i'm afraid once i move to australia he's gonna find him somebody else yeah. that's into threesome yeah. and i'm gonna be left by myself yeah. to be honest if i was broken up with like that i would definitely not go back to that person but the fact that she went back not once okay but twice? Really? L like, I genuinely can't understand. Why the hell would you do that to yourself? He says that having a threesome is really important to him and really wants her to change her mind. When I was 28, I experienced my first threesome. There was so much passion and there was so much pleasure that since then, I wanted to involve threesome in all my relationships. Oh, but then you guys, it gets kind of fuzzy here, okay? Apparently, when they first met, she told him that she was down for threesomes. And so he was like really excited because that's what he's like really into, obviously, we can tell. But out of nowhere, she said that she didn't want to do it anymore, which is why he was shocked and continuously pushes her for it. And in my opinion, Alex likes this guy. And I just likes this guy. She really, really likes this guy, okay? She likes him to the point of getting back with him, not once, but twice. And why she's also pushing so hard for threesome not to happen. Any reasonable woman will leave if the partner keeps pushing them onto this. But there's something about Adriano that just keeps bringing her back, which is why she wants to continue trying. But it's like so sad because when she's like, pick me or the threesome, he just says no. Okay, just no. Like, I feel like the guy clearly doesn't like her as much as she likes him, and he's an addict to his own sexual desires. And you know, I bet threesomes feel good, but it's not something that is needed. And for him to, like, pick it over her feelings to show that he's not, like, really into her at all. But what do I know? Because they go home and they start <gasps> Oh my gosh. Okay, whatever. 
Moving on, we have Sean and Alia. So, they're going shopping, and Sean is nervous because he only did men shopping with him and not women shopping. So, they get there, and Alia is picking up all these clothes that he wants to wear. And Sean realizes that he can't help him, so he just sits down. And then he waits, and waits, and waits. And then he's like, damn, this is like when I was married to a woman. Been exclusively dating men, I mean, for a long, long time. And I guess in this moment, it's hitting me that I'm in a relationship with a woman. And I'm like the stereotypical husband whose wife is shopping and I'm stuck holding her purse. Bored out of my mind. We do love shopping. I can't lie. I do love shopping. So then he tells us that he preferred men now because they did need to take all that time to get ready, take all that time out of the day for shopping and so on. And because Alia is not acting like a woman, this really isn't what he signed up for. So he feels very conflicted. And I feel for the guy. Okay, I really do. But you cannot get your Douglas back. He's gone. I'm sorry, he's gone. Oh, does that mean I have to call Alia she now? I've been calling her he this whole entire time. Um, okay, I'll just fix that in the next episode. I'm not re-recording. I'm sorry, okay? I'm just sorry. Anyways, anyways, anyways. Sean is 61, okay? He knows what he wants now, whereas Alia is still young and trying to find herself. Sean also says that he prefers and misses Alia's old personality as well. Douglas has a personality that I love and adore. Shy and sweet, introverted, unsure, and that kind of peaceful energy is a little more easier on me. This one is dramatic. Very dramatic. Like, I feel like they're in two completely different places in life, so because of that, they need to live their life separately, okay? Alia, you do what you gotta do with your transition and finding somebody that you love. Sean, you do what you gotta do with finding a man that won't transition to a woman. Boom, love, happy, peace. That's the end of this episode. Thank you so much for watching. Damn, what kind of transition is that? Um, let's start over. Thank you so much for watching. Please like and subscribe. Please leave your thoughts in the comments below. Bye.